Alright guys, this is Dogcam with another Minecraft video and today guys we will do a tutorial yeah because of yeah, a lot of requests uh, about the design um, yeah we're gonna do a tutorial for the Enderman XP farm it is the most efficient XP farm out there you can get to level 50 within 5 minutes 5 to 10 minutes it depends a bit here you can see the design the original design was made by Panda on GL 2579 server and I will of course uh, put a link in the video description to the original video. I talked to the guys you know because I wanted uh, to make sure they're okay with when I do a tutorial for the design and they gave me their okay they say uh, even said they appreciate it when I do one so that's all cleared out credits where credits due and now we should have a look at the design and the basic features. All right so now the farm is set to XP farming mode. There are two different modes, either it's Ender Pearl Collection or XP farming plus Ender Pearl Collection. For the XP farming part, well, the Endermen are collected here in this two wide area. You can easily access them. You can, for, for example, stand here, look at them a bit, make them teleport in, and then just, yeah, whack away, kill tons of them, and thus get XP rapidly. can see yeah as I said up to level 50 in about 5 to 10 minutes. Another advantage of the design is of course that you get a lot of ender pearls and also of course it's a fun project to build something like that in the end and yeah we should have a look how one of these designs is made. And here we are in a brand new world. I just came down here and killed the dragon. That is important. Um, yeah, make sure to take out the dragon, otherwise, it can happen that it might fly over to your farm, which is going to be over there. Um, so make sure to kill him um, yeah, to prevent any damage of, to your design while you use it. So. Um, you start, this is the platform when you go through the portal, you start on a platform like that. Um, I have a little passageway that leads back to the portal, um, which will take you to the last bed you slept in. A portal will form when you kill the dragon, and the dragon will drop to the floor, and there will be a portal, and it will always take you back to the last bed you slept in. And yeah, I have a bed right next to the ender portal in the stronghold. And if we go through, we will end up right in front of the portal again. And if you jump through and go to the end, you will end up here. A little side note, um, really important. You have this platform here. It's a one, two, three, four, five by five platform. This is the spawn area inside the end. Don't put any chests around here in this area. Don't build anything because every time you will re-enter the end, everything around here will be deleted. So make sure if you put chests here or whatnot, you know, <laughs> don't do it or at least don't put any valuable things in here. First step for our ender farm design will be we need to get some space between us and the main island here. We want to make use of the spawning of the mobs and right now everything is spawning here on the island. So you could torch it out, that would be one way or yeah, put half slabs down but the uh, yeah, simplest way is just um, go out. And that's what we want to do now. We're going to build about 200 to 250 blocks out. Make sure you're really far enough away. Um, have some space, but 200 blocks should be enough. Um, the critical radius would be 144 blocks away from any other spawnable ground. But yeah, you never know how big you want to build and stuff, so make it 200. And that's what I'm going to do now. Um, go out for about 150 blocks. And then we need to go down and I'm going to show you how you do that. So see you when I reached uh, yeah, the 150 block mark. Now I was 
going out 150 blocks from my start area and <laughs> now I'm torching up the place and you can see the reason for that. You get enderman spawns on here. Don't have decent light level so whoops, <laughs> fell off the edge. Be careful if you play in survival if you do that. Until you reach the end and now we're exactly 150 blocks away from our platform. So now we're gonna go down. How do you build down? It's impossible, you might say, but there is tricks to use and water is very useful for that. It is a bit tricky. You put down a water source block like that and then you just hop into it and swim in it and by doing this you can go uh, up and down and place blocks, even go downwards. So, for example, you get in the water stream. Let me see, need to stop the flying, it's a bit weird. Then you swim up and yeah, put your blocks down, <laughs> not like that, uh, below. Of course, let's try again. It's a bit tricky, you need to be careful. You might die a few times, so make sure you don't carry any precious things or anything you really need. And this way you could build down um, even further like this. Just swim down your water stream and make your way down. Just like this. Could do go down as far as you want it. Then you swim up this corner here. Whoop, be careful. Oh, oh, oh. Really need to be careful if you do that. And you place a block down corner here like this and then you make your way up there all right and now you made your way down and now you can go further out so we're gonna go another 50 blocks or so um, 150 we're away already so that is safe and what we want to do now is go further out and then build diagonally up um, the reason why we're doing this why are we we building down is yeah, we want to make use of um, yeah, the uh, nice building height, but we don't want to go in higher than 128, like the old build maximum, because if we do that, we will decrease the yeah, efficiency of our trap. So we're going to go down a bit and stay below the old build height, which is 128 blocks. So let me see need to eyeball it a bit. If you counted your blocks you will know how, how many you have to go out and basically then you will, yeah, I can fly now but you would staircase up like this. And by the way I'm using obsidian here. You could use um, different blocks of course. Um, just was using obsidian because of the looks of it probably. I had a lot left I had a, a different design here as a farm and yeah so I had obsidian in my SMP world or my single player world SMP my single player world and was able to use it so just staircase down and yeah we almost eyeballed it here we need to correct it a little bit and this way you can um, yeah go downward here in the end or whenever you need to build downwards and you can't reach it. Let's finish our staircase and then we can start with the actual trap design. Make sure to put down torches. What I did in my original world or in my yeah, world to world, I was um, using tracks, minecart tracks, to make the connection faster and I highly suggest um, you should do that as well. But for this design we will not use it. This will be the basic design, the basic, functi basic functionality. If you want it, you could remove these blocks here again, but you can also leave them there, no problem. If you do, of course make sure to put some torches down so no mobs can spawn. We will take them out again. And also our yeah, way down here. <laughs> yeah, it's in creative. It's cool. Very simple. This will take you a while. Um, this was the, one of the most tricky parts in building this farm because yeah, I fell off the water stream one or two times. Just stay calm. 
don't uh, use your arrow keys uh, excessively just use space to swim up and down and you should be okay so now we reached our final destination to start the build here and yeah that's what we should do now all right what I did next in my build the legit build I was making a platform um, small platform with dirt and then I was creating a snow golem farm and um, a snow farm I'm pretty sure you guys know that design you put a snow golem in a one by one area with glass and then you can harvest infinite snow from it so that's what I did and thus I was building the whole trap design out of snow because yeah that, this is a block that is easy accessible here in the end and that's why I choose to use it you could also of course use the end stone um, it's about the same I mean if you use some nice efficiency tools on it you can get it uh, fairly quick and what I want to do now is from our start point here go out 25 blocks um, towards that direction so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 All right, 25 blocks, put on torches, don't want endermen to spawn around here. And now, around here, we will start to make our yeah, basic mechanism. The platform the mobs will land on. We need some build space, so make an area, let's say, mm, yeah five by two or something where you can stand on a bit and you will put down your workbenches and stuff you need you could also make it over here you need a nice build station we don't need it here in creative mode so there you go this is the next step in the build next we need to think how wide we want to do our farm design here we will pick let's say 17 8 in that direction, eight in that direction, and one middle floor here. All right, so next step, we need to extend our platforms here. We've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and the same over here. Now, we're gonna think about pistons. We're gonna use the pistons and we need to put them down like this facing upwards to control our floor. Um, with those pistons we will be able to switch between um, kill mode or XP farming mode. I generally have the farm set to um, kill mode when I arrive in the end then I come back here and have tons and tons of ender pearls I grab them and yeah, then I set the farm to XP farming mode and get my XP going. So next we need to build a little ring around here. We need uh, to have a place where we can put down the redstone and so on. So I'm going to finish that up and see you when I'm done with that. Alright guys, we extended the platform a bit. Um, what I was doing can see it right here if you look from the sides I was putting the glowstone on top of my pistons I was putting down a row of snow here and I was building another ring around it So if you look from below it's a massive platform that's what you do next we need to power the pistons um, well what you could do you could use redstone right here on top of the blocks next to the pistons and also on the other side and this way we'll be able to power them simultaneously we're going to use redstone torches and um, to do that um, we will go below the area here right there and also over here and now we need to put down redstone of course you would have to use the bucket trick again go down a bit and make your platform um, where you could walk on Alright, so here and here we need redstone power, so let's put it there. Some torches we need. Mm, let's 
put the water bucket away for now. You can hear the pistons working already. And we're gonna do same thing here. Now we need to uh, choose a, a position for our lever. Um, I don't know, we could for this design, we could just put it there, doesn't matter. You can um, yeah, wire it to wherever you want. So let's bring the redstone over, just like this. We need to bring it to those torches, so we need to go down one more, come over here. This and this. Now make sure make the redstone pointing at the blocks with the torches and simply connect it like this. And we have a working platform going up and down. And yeah, it's, yeah we were quite cost efficient here, I would say. There are for sure different ways to wire it. You could use more repeaters. Um, yeah. But I think that is okay. So now it's time to think again a bit. So what we need to know is we want to kill Enderman here. If we want to yeah, bring Enderman down to be one shot killed, we need to drop them 43 blocks. So if the platform is extended from here, 43 blocks up will be one shot kill. And if we flick our lever, we bring it down and we go over 43 blocks, so 44 blocks. And this will be the kill mode. Alright, so next up we need to kind of make a staircase and a frame around here. So that's what we're going to do next, um, just build us a frame. After we made this ring or frame around our piston setup here, we should make sure to extend it like this on both sides. And next we need half slabs and we're gonna put half slabs and I chose those ones here, I like the look of it, all the way around it and um, this way cover our redstone. After we're done with that, we already finished the basic setup for the kill platform here. If you flick your lever, you will see the yeah, floor goes down. You have that little frame of half slaps around it. And if you bring it up, it looks like that. Now, it's counting time again. And we should use, I don't know, let's use yellow wool. We'll remove it anyways later on. But we need to count up 43 blocks from the platform here when it's extended. So let's do this. We're gonna pick the corner here and I'm gonna make sure to yeah, build up 43 blocks and then I'll be back. Okay, we are 43 blocks up and this is our marker we will use to build the next yeah, stage of the farm and <laughs> yeah, yeah, already spawning. Get off, not yet. So, we got that pillar here, and from that pillar, we need to build um, another frame. Yes, we do a lot of frames. <laughs> yeah, this will basically mark our kill area. You can see it just like that. And yeah, we need to make it the same size as we have for the ring below. Um, and we chose a width of 17 for the inside here. Remember, 8, 8 and one block in the middle, so 17. So we need to make sure we have the same size up here and I'm going to finish the ring and then we'll be back. All right, ring is done. What we need to do now is we, made, we need to make this ring three high. So next step put in this wall all the way around make it three high and then we're gonna use a nice trick we're gonna use vines to yeah, break the fall of the mobs and reset it because that's important you know we need a consistent drop height 
and the setup I'm going to show you right here um, is very useful for all kinds of mob traps um, if you want to do XP farming. If you want to farm XP from regular mobs, you need a 23 block drop. And yeah, if you have several level uh, layers in your traps, um, you can use that trick to reset the fall of the mobs. So let's put the lever away and next up we're going to use buttons. It's fairly cost efficient, you could use signs, um, whatever is transparent and uh, yeah, prevents vines from growing. And we're going to put a full row of buttons all along here. And next step is we need vines. Um, in legit gameplay you would make shears and cut them away from trees and you would have your vines <laughs> vines I always have a hard time saying that in your inventory and you would place them down like that and then you'll just wait for them to grow but they will not pass um, below the buttons there just like this and you saw it already, I stick to it and then I fall through. So we need to wait and let it gameplay for them to grow. But also, of course, we could place them, but it would be more cost efficient if you just place two rows and let them grow down. But yeah, creative is very cool for tutorials, especially because you can don't have to worry about resources too much. And here we go. This is the next stage of the build. Three high ring, vines to reset the fall. We can quickly demonstrate it. So if a mob gets in here, stopped and then falls down, and yeah, we exactly have a 43 drop uh, block drop. <laughs> so see you with the net next build stage. Now we're gonna start doing the spawning pets. In this design, we will use the classical piston pusher setup. Um, <laughs> get out of here! Um, to make our spawning pads, you could use alternative designs. Iso had an alternative um, piston pusher design as well in his Enderman farm. He made uh, it um, in a more wide layout. Thus, his yeah, collection area is a bit larger and this is the advantage of this farm here you have a fairly compact space where you will be able to collect your loot and XP so now time to put down pressure plates all along here and this will be the spots our enderman will spawn on the first layer we will have of course several layers and you can extend as far as you want yeah okay <laughs> until you reach the build limit but um, yeah as I said you should stay below um, the maximum build height you should stay below 128 the old maximum build height it's really important otherwise you would lose efficiency because then the spawning algorithm would have to check for way more chunks and thus lower the efficiency of your trap so redstone and alternating here repeaters same thing on the other side and the next stage is our piston array so put down two lines of blocks like this do the same on the other side now we can think about putting down pistons use sticky pistons if you do it in legit gameplay you would just yeah walk on like this Nothing can happen. It's not dangerous yet, but I highly suggest um, if you walk walk up here. I had um, below the area here. I had a little platform, you know, to yeah, just below the buttons. So when I fell down, could climb up the vines and yeah, was not dropping that all the time. Because yeah, if you walk work that high up, always need to do some safety percussions. So there we go. Percussions, did I say percussions? Safety preparations, I, I wanted to say. So, next stage, put down your blocks. And now the yeah, piston setup is, or push, piston pusher setup is already yeah, armed. So, if a mob would spawn on here, 
would be pushed off immediately. And that is basically what we want. And now we need to make sure we leave enough space um, for our endoman. So think about it. They are three tall, so they reach up to this platform. And here we could start our next layer. So let's put down our two frame lines here, just like that. We're good to go. So you can see it's a three high whoops three high gap in here and the man will be able to spawn. And now actually if we go down we will see first Enderman spawns. Probably the first drops. Let's see let's up <laughs> there we go. And yeah he's one shot kill already. Now, of course, if we only have that few spawning pads, we don't reach a good efficiency. And also, if you look on the outsides here, there are areas and there, look, where they're spawning. So we need to take, uh, make sure they will not be able to spawn in here. Um, we cannot use light, so we need to use blocks later on. So, let's see. We should get rid of them. And then we'll make sure build the next layer and also make sure it's mop or spawn safe. Idiots. Come on. I dare you. <laughs> okay, moving on. So, in the next stage of the build process, we will make sure to extend our two frame lines here by another block. Do it on both sides and yeah, there will be our next piston pusher setup. So yeah, just do the same as we did below. Put down pressure plates and repeat the pattern. So I'm gonna fast forward through that sequence now. Alright, next layer is done and if you look at it now you will see there's only a one high gap here and a two high gap there that means no enderman will be able to spawn so the only dangerous area so to speak is right here and what I did in my design and that worked really nice um, yeah, I, there's some small changes to the original design of course you know because everybody adds their own touches to it I just uh, was putting down half slabs and to prevent spawning. And now um, you already have the basic idea. Now what you do next, you see it's already working. Fall height is reset. Those two guys down there will be one shot kill now. So let's try one shot kill, one shot kill. XP. So it works already. And yeah, now we will just extend. We will just extend. Um, let's stand up here and check our build height. F3, bring up your coordinate system and if you look at your Y coordinate we're at 85. So yeah, we got some more layers to go until we reach the old build limit. And yeah, you just repeat the pattern here and add in some floors and I will do that and I will see you when I'm done with that. Okay guys, I added seven more spawning platforms now and now we have a decent array here already, that's that's good. You know, you could go further down and then build further up, of course, but we should check the ceiling and check our maximum height on top to make sure we are below 128. Let's see how high that is now, it should be good. Y, 113. Awesome. We had we would even have some more room up. Now, um, last stage on top, we don't want no spawns. So what we do, we're gonna half slap out the area. 
simple as that. That always helps. So just half slip out both sides. Okay. That's basically it. That's all you have to do up here. You can do all kinds of adjustments. For example, there's a slight chance if an enderman spawns out here and he might land on the platform and you will not get him. So you could, for example, uh, build up here or have um, additional rings like that or frames that will prevent the enderman to fall out. But you would, of course, need to half slap it build that all the way up or just close it off that would also work all kinds of ideas but I'll leave it open because yeah the world will be available for download and you can uh, test things out so I will yeah basically try to give you the design as naked as possible and now there's a last uh, yeah, thing we need to do and yeah, we can see below here um, we got Enderman collecti or collecting already, but problem is, and yeah, they all should be one shot kill. Yeah, already working great. Okay, we should quickly turn off the mobs, <laughs> otherwise, it will be too annoying. Wow, <laughs> look cool. So now you saw they were roaming around a bit and that is bad. We of course want to contain them in, in our area here so we can access them. So now we need to yeah, build some, some circles or some frames up again. So let's quickly think. There are three high up to here when they stand on there. So we need a ring this height level to prevent them from walking out and even when the curtain is down whoop, or the floor is down they will not be able to walk out because they would have to step on the half slab and they will get stuck so they will be contained that's why the half slabs here are fairly useful and yeah two and a half blocks gap never can get out of there so what we do next is yeah make a ring like this around our collection area now as we are done with that um, yeah, we need to make sure um, no enderman can escape or fall yeah, in a non-straight line and maybe land on the ring here. So what we will do now, and yeah, that's a bit uh, of work now, always in a distance of two, we build those rings all the way up um, to the yeah, start of the drop area with the buttons and vines. Okay, almost there. Yeah, so at all these spots you make rings and to finish it off you will extend your yeah, fall reset setup here by one block. So we have a, another two wide gap only and no enderman can escape. They are kind of yeah, caged in now. If you make more rings like this and so on all the way down and I'm gonna finish that up off camera and I'll be back when I'm done with the rings of death. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Rings all the way. Distance of two. I removed the yellow pillar here and now the basic design of the farm is already done. You can access it here and we should turn mobs on, set it to hard game mode and let's see, let's have a look up, six entities, five and so on. It starts raining endermen and yeah, when we are here 
can see they cannot escape, they try to and you can walk around and do your one shot kill thing. This guy teleported out and this is one of the next issues we need to address. In my original design in the world tour you see lots of water around and there's a reason for it. Because sometimes those endermen can teleport out and you can prevent that by covering the area below here with water and also the walkways. You know, frame them in with water and they cannot teleport through. Let's quickly um, test the kill mode. Should be able to clear the area here. And maybe we can yeah, have a look at it, how quick it fills up with ender pearls. But yeah, it's the design I have in my world is a bit wider and I have more levels in there so it's a bit more efficient but you already see um, yeah, we're having nice spawn rates in here and yeah kill mode is working as well and now you also see why we needed yeah, the reset here we got several levels they fall down from way up here and that would of course exceed the 43 drop or block drop so they need to fall through Break the fall here in the vines. Let's test it. Oops. And then go down either to collecting XP or loot. This is how it works. And now um, next stage would be to make the area a bit yeah teleportation proof. But for that I will go back to my world tour world and I will show you what I did there. Um, and I will only explain the principle because as I said I wanted to leave the design as naked as possible and I wanted to give you some room for your own tests or yeah, edit, adding own design features or whatnot. Alright, so we're just gonna go there and I'm, I'm gonna show you what I did. So see you in a second. Alright. <laughs> back in the world tour and we should have a look at the water I have around here um, what I did directly um, next to my enderman farm and you see I have different wiring I used more repeaters so the design I was showing you was more efficient already it was next development stage so to speak I have an enchanting room here and lots of chests and stuff where I can put all the ender pearls I get and Let's yeah, and I added some some design, some 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 enderman things, and let me see. I need to find a nice place to toss a pearl from, or ender, yeah, ender pearl. Yeah, you can see it covered with water. Let's get on top. I have it covered with water all around, and also you can see the area around the spawning or yeah collection area is covered with water. There's a reason for it, because yeah, you saw it sometimes, the one-shot or weakened endermen are teleporting um, to the walkways there and you do want to pre prevent that and you can do that by having a water curtain that will give them a hard time, they basically cannot teleport through. Sometimes they, <gasps> sometimes they manage to do it, so I went ahead, oh, oh let's get over here, I feel a bit unsecure, I still wear my diamond armor. Yeah, I went ahead and covered the whole area and now none of them can escape. I never saw um, any of them at the, the track there or somewhere. So make sure to cover the area with water. Put source blocks down, let it flow, make sure um, not to destroy your redstone. I have some glass um, that helps to, yeah, to kind of shape the water, keep it in place. And here I basically chose uh, more of a round shape. I was putting down different source blocks on top here and there and yeah as I said made most of the design um, from snow um, and if we look up you can see um, they had the different levels exactly the same I was showing you you can see the rings and yeah I added this enderman here I've also some yeah, torches behind the enderman to make it stand out a bit but as I said feel free to play around with the design the one we just were building will be available for download. I will make sure um, the spawn 
will be right um, on top of the stronghold. Um, I can do that with MC Edit, and you will be able to find it. But um, to make sure everything is cool, I will write down the coordinates of the stronghold as well here in the video description so you can find it. Um, I hope. You found this tutorial useful, I hope you liked it and let me know if you have any questions and of course um, once again much credits and much shout outs and much love to JL on, uh, on, the, on his server, Panda, Banane and all the others, you know, <laughs> great design and I added my own little twist to it and that's it for today. I'm gonna farm me some XP. I'm out. Bye. Bye.